What's up guys, Justin here of Fugitech. And as most of you may have noticed, Android tablets are now becoming more and more in demand nowadays. And in case you missed it, Realme has officially launched its company's first tablet, this Realme Pad. It's a simple budget Android tablet that aims to offer an all-around experience and is now available locally with a starting price of 10,990 pesos, which is really quite surprising for a tablet. Anyways, we've been using it for some time now, so let's see if it's definitely value for money. Here's our full review of the Realme Pad. Otherwise, the Realme Pad offers a premium design at an affordable price. It's made from aluminum alloy, it's thin, and feels comfortable in the hands thanks to its rounded corners and flat edges. The unit we have is in the gray color with a matte finish that keeps fingerprints and smudges away. Oh, and it's also available in a gold colorway if you're interested. Weighing 440 grams, it does feel a little heavy carrying the pad. But honestly, it's more lightweight compared to other tablets. Up front, we get a 10.4-inch display with thick bezels on all sides. In horizontal orientation, you'll find the front camera on the top bezel, so we'll introduce the buttons and ports in this orientation. Located on the right side are the USB Type-C port, two loudspeakers, and the 3.5mm headphone jack. Meanwhile, on the left side, we get the power slash lock button together with two more speakers. Now, up top, we have here the volume rocker, two microphones, and a micro SD card slot. There's nothing found on the bottom part. Overall, Realme did a good job here. The design is simple yet elegant, and despite having thick bezels on all sides, it actually makes holding the tablet easier without triggering any inadvertent screen touches. The placement of the headphone jack is quite odd, but it's not bad at all when you plug in your earphones. Now focusing on its display, as I've mentioned, we get a 10.4-inch IPS LCD screen with a resolution of 1200 by 2000 pixels and a pixel density of 224 pixels per inch. There's no glass protection mentioned, and there's also no tempered glass or any pre-installed screen protector here. Despite having an IPS panel, this display looks sharp, has decent viewing angles, and brightness is good even when using it under direct sunlight. However, the pad is quite reflective, which some of you might get annoyed with especially when watching your favorite series. And also, there's no HDR support here. Well, this display is acceptable considering its budget price. In the display settings, you can switch between the usual light mode and dark mode, and there's also several modes like reading mode and nightlight, which are perfect options if you love reading ebooks. As for the refresh rate, there's nothing fancy here, you have the standard 60Hz. Audio-wise, its quad speakers can get loud enough to fill a small room. And it's worth mentioning that it includes Dolby Atmos that makes the sound crisp and clear. Running the software department is Android 11 skinned with Realme UI. Scrolling through, it looks similar to stock Android and we appreciate the lack of bloatware here. However, some of you might get disappointed as Realme also lessens its custom features. There's no themes on board, you can't change icons or fonts, no always-on display, and no sidebar options like what we see on Realme smartphones. The app drawer and 3-button navigation are turned on by default, but you can change it to a simpler version or to gesture navigation if you like to. For security, there's no fingerprint scanner, so face recognition is the only way to quickly unlock the device. And it worked reliably. So the unit we have has 32GB of internal storage, and out of that 32GB, we get 23GB of usable space right out of the box. There's also a 4 plus 64GB variant available, as well as a 6 plus 128GB option. And all of them are LTE supported except for this one. Either way, all Realme Pad is expandable up to 1TB via a micro SD card. When it comes to performance with a MediaTek Helio G80 processor paired with a Mali G52 GPU, 3GB of RAM, and 32GB of storage, the Realme Pad can handle basic activities very well such as Zoom calls, browsing the web, and video streaming. But of course, don't expect too much when it comes to heavy tasks like playing heavy games. This really isn't a gaming tablet. We tried playing Genshin Impact and Pokemon Unite and we experienced a few hiccups with texture quality. We still suggest playing under the lowest graphics settings for a smoother gameplay. Anyways, we ran it through our standard benchmark apps and here are the results we got. Now let's talk about the cameras. The Realme Pad has an 8 megapixel rear and 8 megapixel front camera. The camera interface is pretty simple with nothing much to play around with. It does have an expert mode that lets you adjust some settings like the ISO, shutter speed, white balance, autofocus, and exposure. So you can take advantage of that. But as far as quality goes, don't expect too much. With the rear camera, we get good contrast, colors, and good dynamic 
range under good lighting conditions. Details are not that sharp but still usable especially for social media postings. But when it comes to low light shots, images are noisy so it's better not to use it in low light settings. Well, I'm pretty sure you won't use the rear camera much anyway. The selfie camera was surprisingly good though. The quality is decent and the natural skin tone is often retained. There's also an ultra wide angle that can be very useful for video calls. For videos both for the front and rear camera, you can shoot up to 1080p at 30 frames per second. Videos can be shaky as there is no electronic stabilization here but we enjoyed using the front camera for video calls as it is clear and again you can opt to widen the angle under the camera settings. Connectivity wise, the Realme Pad has the basic ones. There's Bluetooth 5.0, GPS, Wi-Fi, and USB Type-C. And as I've mentioned earlier, the other variants are available with LTE connectivity. Checking out battery, the Realme Pad has a 7100mAh capacity with 18 watts fast charging. This tablet can easily last you 2 to 3 days with normal usage and 1 day with heavy use. Charging takes about 2 hours and 30 minutes from 0 to 100%. When we ran it through the PC Mark's Work 3.0 battery test, this device got a very low 5 hours and 26 minutes. But nonetheless, in our standard video loop test, which entails playing a 1080p video on loop, at 50% brightness, 50% volume, and airplane mode turned on, it yielded 14 hours and 42 minutes. Alright, finally, let's talk about the price. The Realme Pad is available locally for 10,990 pesos for this 3GB plus 32GB variant. The LTE 4GB plus 64GB option is available for 14,990 pesos, while the LTE 6GB plus 128GB variant is available for 16,990 pesos. Well, the Realme Pad delivers on what it promises. It has decent performance and gets its basics right when it comes to the display, battery life, and user experience. If you're looking for a bang-for-the-buck Android tablet to get your regular work done or just need a bigger device for your binge-watching needs, you can definitely consider this Realme Pad. However, if you're looking for a more powerful budget Android tablet, then we recommend that you get the Xiaomi Pad 5 instead as it performs way better, it has support for HDR10, it's got that 120Hz display, long battery life, better cameras, and it has a Xiaomi Smart Pen as well. So yeah, that wraps up this review. What are your thoughts about this Realme Pad? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like, subscribe to our channel for more content, hit that bell icon so you don't miss any future uploads, and be sure to visit yugatech.com for the latest tech news and reviews. Once again, this is Justin, and don't forget to wash your hands and stay at home.